Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Tom Cat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. Okay, first things first, I have a new, well, figuring out, I had blurry background going on here. It was actually, um, we're pretty sure the lens, my fancy lens, which is really unfortunate on my camera. So um, we're gonna be taking that in to get fixed. So that being said, I have the stock lens on now on my camera and it just doesn't have like, it's just not as nice. So it, I can't get like as far back. Although I think this is probably okay. Anyway, I've had to like mess around with things. So hopefully we're getting this all figured out with the filming. Okay, today I am gonna be going over um, kind of the bias binding counterpart if you're using knits. I had some people ask me if you could use bias, bounding, bias binding on knits from last week, and uh, yes, you can if you're uh, not needing things to stretch. So for instance, um, bias binding like on the back neck and on the shoulder seams, um, the Closet Core Patterns Core T-shirt, the free pattern, actually there's an option to do that, to cover those seams, just to give it a little st stability. You could use woven bias tape for that kind of stuff very easily. Um, or even like hems and stuff if you don't need it to stretch, but just know it's not gonna have, it'll have a different hand and a different feel putting the woven onto the knit. So just keeping that in mind. But if you do have a curved hemline on a knit top and you're not wanting to just fold it under and hem, I'm going to show you how to do that with um, bias or um, knit strip binding strips basically. Um, I already have a video, uh, my t-shirt week, I showed you how to bias bo bound, bias bind, and it's not even bias bind, knit bind, <laughs> like a neck edge and an armhole edge. Um, where it's you're wrapping the seam line with the fabric, so it's got, you know, the little edge. Um, but today, so I do have that, I'll link that video up here. Uh, but today I'm going to be showing you how to basically use the knit strips um, if you're wanting to kind of finish it like um, cleanly on the inside for an armhole or if you have a curved hem. So, um, and I'll show you two different ways if you have a cover stitch and if you don't have a cover stitch. If you have a cover stitch, it can be very like lightweight and hardly even feel like anything's there. It's a little bulkier if you don't have a cover stitch machine, if you just have a like a sewing machine, um, but I, I'll show you both ways. Okay, with that being said, let's go to the cutting table and I'll show you how to cut your strips. All right we're going to cut some knit binding. Um, okay, so I wanna talk a little bit though before we do that. So this is kind of the knit counterpart to bias binding. I'm actually using a knit or a woven pattern. This is the Hyssop um, top by uh, Deer and Doe. And um, yeah, the Hyssop <laughs> by Deer and Doe patterns and it's meant for woven fabrics, but I'm gonna be making it in a knit. Um, I've not sized down on this pattern at all. I've made it the same size I would have made for my daughter if I were making a woven. Um, it's just, this is a cotton spandex, so it has a little bit more body to it than, I mean, a lot more body than say like a rayon spandex or an ITY or even like a cotton modal. Um, this is, it, it just has more, more body because it's got the cotton in it. So I'm leaving this just as is. But, um, the pattern has you finishing off the neckline with a facing, which I'm going to go ahead and do because the neckline doesn't need to stretch. There's some uh, fun stuff that goes on with the, with buttons and stuff on the side seam, but I'm going to be finishing off the, um, armhole. The pattern has you finishing it off with bias tape. I could, I guess, use woven bias tape to finish off this armhole, but, um, sometimes bias tape, woven bias tape and knit garments don't play well together just because of, you know, one stretches more than the other and it can get just a little fiddly. So I'm going to be finishing this off with, I don't know what to call it, bias. It's not really bias binding because I feel like, or uh, knit binding, because I feel like knit binding is when you're, you know, covering the seam allowance. So I don't know what you want to call this. Knit facings, knit tape, knit, I don't know, knit tape. <laughs> um, and this, the same way, you know, it's just going to be like last week. I was doing an armhole, but you could also do this with a curved hem. This actually is, I probably use this more for knit tops that have curved hems because folding it up once and hitting it with the serger when it's got a curve can be a real pain in the rear end. So I would use this method as well um, for curved hems. And that includes like circle skirts. This works great for that kind of thing too. Um, unless you're using like a facing on the bottom. So that's where we're going with this. So this is the top we're using. Now, my pattern has 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance along the armhole edge, so I don't need to do anything to my armhole. If your pattern has a 5 eighths inch um, seam allowance or anything, or half inch, anything other than 3 eighths, 
you're going to want to trim your um, seam allowance to three-eighths of an inch. Um, if you're doing it on a hem, you could just really leave it as is, unless you really want the hem to be a little shorter or whatever. Um, that's kind of up to you. But yeah, if I if this was not a three-eighths inch seam allowance, I would have um, trimmed this down to three-eighths of an inch. Okay. So I'm going to be cutting one and a half inch wide strips. Now, we don't cut this on the bias like you do for wovens because we want the greatest amount of stretch, which on wovens would be being cut on the 45 degree angle or on the bias. With knit, the greatest amount of stretch is typically cross grain. So this is just a cotton spandex uh, single knit, single jersey, and it you can see little bitty ribs if you look really, really carefully. Well, the ribs run this way. Um, you know, this is the selvage of the fabric. It's right out of frame. This is actually a scrap. So I've got, um, you know, different, it's, it's kind of weird underneath here, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to be cutting just cross grain strips or with the greatest amount of stretch, which almost always is across the grain on knits. So you'll be cutting from selvage to selvage. And I'm just going to be doing a few, um, I mean, just like random sizes, basically. So I'm squaring these off with my um, 2 by 18 ruler. I'm just putting this right up to the folded edge. And we're just going to cut. I know I had a lot of quilters last week that were like, you should be using a heavier, um, you know, like the six by 24 inch ruler so that, you know, cause this is too flimsy for the rotary cutter, but I'm going to be real honest. I hate, I have a six by 24 inch ruler. It is so heavy and it moves my fabric when I try and move it. I just find it really bulky. So I, I, I prefer this <laughs> and I don't, I'm not riding my blade super close up to it. I feel like garment sewing, you're not, don't have to be quite as precise maybe as with quilting. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut just a couple of strips here on the cross grain. As always with rotary cutters, you want to be careful. Watch your fingers. I'm cutting away from myself this week. I know better. And I am keeping my fingers out of the way. I promise. I'm not even getting close. <laughs> okay. So I've got just, I mean, these are cut on the fold, so they're pretty long. So we've got plenty of these. So I've got um, one and a half inch wide strips. Look at that too. It's wanting to curl to the right side, which is what Jersey wants to do, but we're going to go tame that. So now um, I'm going to go over to the um, serger actually, but I'll talk about the sewing machine as well if you want to finish your um, armholes and stuff on the sewing machine. So I'll meet you over at the, the machines now. All right, so what I've got here, um, let's try and turn this a little so we can see. We're going to be finishing off. This is kind of what we're going for. So it looks a lot like the bias tape edging on the inside. Um, it's just knit instead of the bias tape. Okay, so I have taken my one and a half inch wide strip and I've just folded it wrong sides together in half. It's very, very simple. I didn't show you that because it's a, a very simple thing. <laughs> Um, I've got my shirt sewn at the um, shoulder seams, and I have my side seam opened up. Now, this is going to be a little different than um, a normal shirt, because normally, once we had these in, we would be sewing, you know, our side seams right sides together and finishing it off that way. But because this has buttons on it, I actually, my side seams get overlapped. So I'll talk you through that part when we get there, <laughs> Um, it's just a little bit different than um, what a normal finish would be. Um, if you were doing this on the hem, you would want to have one seam already finished and then just have one open. Okay, so it's the same thing again. All right, so I am going to be um, sewing my strip with my, my two sides together, my fold away, uh, matching up my three raw edges like so. Now, you can sew this at a sewing machine if you'd like um, at the 3-8 seam allowance. I just prefer doing it on the serger because I, I feel like um, it, that quarter inch serged seam just gives me a really something nice to like fold it over on. So you could go ahead and do this on the sewing machine. You could use a straight stitch um, unless you have an armhole that needs to stretch. But typically with a sleeveless armhole, that's not the case. Um, even in fitted ones, 
um, because it's sleeveless, but, <laughs> but definitely, you know, if you, if you think that the armhole needs to stretch, you could use a um, stretch stitch on your machine. All right, let's go to the serger and I'm going to show you how we're going to finish this. Okay, so I'm actually starting my strip and I'm going to fold this. Actually, let me cut that end more square. Um, I'm actually going to fold this end over on itself like you would if, um, I think sometimes when you're quilting. Now, if my side seams were going to get sewn like a normal side seam, I would not bother with this step, but <laughs> mine are going to be overlapping. So if you've got a normal shirt, just, you know, have it go off a little bit off the edge. That's absolutely fine. All right. I'm just going to slide this under here. And I know with my serger that when I keep my raw edges right here at the edge, that that is sewing my seam at three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Oops. I also have a lot of bulk because I've got a button placket. Okay, as I'm sewing um, here in these tight curves, I'm not stretching the binding, but I am pulling it um, just a little bit, just to kind of keep it flat. You don't want to pull it too much or you'll have some cupping. Um, a little bit's okay, because then it makes it want to pull to the inside. And then in the straighter parts, like through the top of the arm's eye and um, the shoulder. You don't need to pull it really at all. Okay, so now we can cut flush with your side seam. I think this got, oh no, that did fine. And then cut your threads on the other end. Again, if you don't have an overlapping side seam like I do, that could just be flush. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to understitch. Again, if your armhole needs to stretch, you may want to skip this step, um, but it really does help. So if you can, <laughs> I highly recommend understitching. So let's go back to the sewing machine. The rest of this, we're all going to finish off on the normal sewing machine. Okay, let's go do it. All right, so let's get to sewing. Maybe, where's my, okay. <laughs> all right, so now we have sewn this to the arm side. Um, I'm just going to pull this to the right. My seam allowance is also going to the right. And I'm just sewing. I'm sewing with the three uh, millimeter stitch length. It's just my preference with knit. But, and I have a ballpoint needle in. But, you know, again, these stitches don't need to um, stretch. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of pulling this a little bit uh, away from the shirt. I just want to make sure that that folded edge covers that surged seam line. Again, I'm sewing just to the right of that seam line on the knit tape and the seam allowance. Okay, so now, and see, it is kind of getting all wonky on us, like it's, it's pulling, but that's fine. That's what we want. All right, at this step, you're either going to put your shirt right sides together you know, 
serge or sew up the side seam, you know, bury your serge tails, whatever you're doing, um, or just backstitch, whatever. And then we'll do the following step. Again, mine's just a little weird because I am overlapping. And it's making it a little bulky on mine just because of the overlap, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna really quickly baste mine in place. You it right now would just go ahead and sew up that side seam. That's not too bad. I <laughs> got that right on my stitch line. Okay. <laughs> all right. Once your side seam is all sewn up, we're going to turn this inside out. So now we have our armhole here. And we're just going to fold everything. Did I want that inside out? No, I don't want that inside out. Sorry, you don't want it inside out. You want it right side out. I had to think, sometimes when you're sewing in a circle, in a loop, it can get confusing. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> oh, right, right side out. So now I'm just gonna be folding everything just like I was. I did for the um, the video last week when we were doing bias tape. It's the same type of thing. Now, my pattern here is getting very bulky under the arm because I have the placket, there's interfacing because there's buttons, there's a lot going on, um, but it's going to be fine. Okay, so now, if you didn't have the overlap, you would be fine right now. All right, so now I'm just going to sew really close to that folded edge and go slow. It can kick off kind of easily, and I'm just taking my fingernail and kind of pulling that over. So ideally, because our finished um, knit tape is three quarters of an inch once it's been folded in half, and um, then, you know, we take up three eighths of an inch with the seam allowance, and then our Seam allowance because you trim off a little bit is a quarter of an inch. You, I theoretically should have about an eighth of an inch. There's also, you know, turn a cloth, but an eighth of an inch over here to the side of the um, serge or the seam, whatever you did. That should be perfect for sewing on. So just go slowly because sometimes when you hit that thicker, you know, surged edge, it can kick you off to the left and then you miss your fold. Okay. So now I need another light like to the left of me, don't I? I was trying to mess around with the lights this time, but okay. So now we have a finished armhole. Again, I have a lot of bulk here under my arm, but that is just the nature of this pattern. But yeah, we've just got a beautiful finish and this will work on hems. Um, I wouldn't do this on necklines. My preference, if you don't need stretch in your neckline, I finish it like this. This is just with a facing and then top stitch down, top stitch that facing down. Um, if it does need to stretch, I prefer neck bands. Uh, that we've I did that whole t-shirt week. Or knit bindings where you just wrap the your your knit strips around the seam allowance like you would bind you know anything but I've also you know shown that on that t-shirt week as well um so yeah I would mostly use this technique for armholes and hems would be my preference so there you go let me know as always if you have any questions I'll put that right side up <laughs> have any questions and I will see you guys next time bye-bye